Hello, everyone. And uh, welcome to the most boring talk within this you know, exciting event of the Embed Linux conference. Well, maybe my talk is only one talk that is not covering about anything about the technological issue, but I'd like to cover something quite boring issue, that is OSS license compliance. And also, maybe all of, some of you will be facing some of the difficult situation to make a leadership within each company to make the open source software license compliance or those kind of things. And maybe you will be suffered from some of the not, and not well understanding you know, legal person or IP department person. And I would, I'd like to tell you why those kind of legal person are so, so much stone-headed or hard-headed guy. So anyway, uh, my name is Ueda, and I'm coming from uh, Japan and working for Sony. And I have an, uh, some of the maybe 15 years, uh, years in experience uh, dealing with the open source community through with the uh, embedded Linux system. And maybe you know that uh, I'm one of the person who started the CE Linux forum about uh, 15 years ago. And CE Linux forum started this you know, embedded Linux conference. So that uh, ELC is something like, uh, I feel ELC is something like a hometown of myself. And within Sony, I'm making some of the uh, leadership of the open source strategy. And uh, some of you were aware that Sony also have a GitHub account, github.com Sony. That is a Sony's official account of the GitHub. Although the uh, number of the project within Sony's GitHub is quite limited, but uh, we are starting something quite interesting. For example, uh, we are starting to uh, make a fabrication of the uh, uh, neural uh, networking uh, deep learning uh, core engine as an uh, open source software, which is uh, Sony's original software. And also, uh, we, uh, I am now uh, taking care of the Sony's GPL source code publication site as well. And if you look into this uh, GPL uh, source code publication site, you may find a bunch of the products are already using Linux. And somebody out of Sony people make a counting how many products are, you know, uh, sipping with Linux. And no, none of the Sony company people did it, but he counted out uh, 1,200 or more. Thank you very much for the Panasonic guy. Anyway, today I'd like to uh, consider about uh, uh, first about uh, uh, each company inside uh, organization or some of the structure to deal with the open source software. And some company is making up uh, some of the core department of open source software, like a cathedral. And maybe this kind of organization they have, he has an executive located here, and IPD staff, legal staff, and operating board, and many of the engineers there. Like uh, some company is saying that the 500 people, or more than 10, 10, 1,000 people, are working for this kind of de department. And uh, that kind of department is taking care of a whole bunch of things about open source software. If you are belonging to such kind of company, maybe you will be definitely a lucky guy. And maybe uh, many of you will not be uh, attending such kind, uh, joining such kind of company, I believe, I guess. And in many cases, within each company, you are uh, forming some sort of the in-house community to deal with open source software, like this way. As uh, here's a cent in the center of the coordinator of the bazaar will be there and making some of the, each volunteers are uh, making some of the contribution each other. And it's something like a, a bazaar style. Maybe you know that cathedral and bazaar is a, a quite, you know, famous article, uh, which must be uh, everybody reads through. But the problem is that, uh, there's somebody still uh, have a, a quite loneliness in each company. Well, uh, no, nobody support me, and uh, nobody, no, 
manager, manager understanding me to use open source software, but I'd like to use open source software. What should I do? Well, what, what is my way? What is, who can help me? And is there any legal guy who can support me? No one, or oh, that kind of you know, struggling person will be still there, I believe. And maybe you will find here my footprints. Maybe I believe about uh, maybe 10 years ago or something, I or some of the uh, Sony's person uh, struggle with uh, this kind of situation. So that uh, we'd, like to, we'd not like to uh, forget about the existence of those kind of people. So uh, if you are believing that you are belonging to the quite lucky guy, please raise your hand within your company. As, well, I know your company has such kind of things. That's great, yeah. Another one is uh, if you are belonging to some of the in-house you know, uh, community, please raise your hand. Well, about uh, 37%, okay. Next one is a great organization. No one, uh, no, no way. There's nothing such kind of organization existing, but I'm a lonely guy. Please raise your hand if you are a lonely guy. Maybe uh, 26%. <laughs> and half of you uh, have not raised your, uh, raised your hand, but it's okay. So today, I'd like to focus upon those two guys. One is a lonely guy, and another is an, uh, some of the uh, person who are making a leadership within uh, each company uh, as an, uh, some of the in-house community. So if you are the, some of the uh, lonely guy who, have not, who, ha who, have, who do not have any support from any person within your uh, group or your company, uh, we'd like to consider what kind of words we can give to him. The first challenge of those kind of people will uh, tackle with those kind of two you know, misunderstandings. One misunderstanding is that OSS is unconditional, free of charge software. This misunderstanding is a really diff uh, diff uh, dangerous one, and which will lead uh, in other, uh, inappropriate use of the open source software, and which may be uh, face uh, some of the serious you know, uh, damage uh, in uh, each company or whatever, like a litigation or whatever. And second uh, misunderstanding is that OSS is crowd with danger when it is used. Without OSS, Without any OSS to, de de to de develop my software, what should we do? Maybe those kind of software engineer will uh, fall into some, some of the condition of hell. But uh, software engineering itself must be quite interesting one. It should be quite something like a heaven. So that it is another big you know, misunderstanding which make us unhappy. So anyway, First, uh, I'd like to recommend those kind of people never give up to convince your manager to use the open source software. Without any uh, good understanding of the management of people, maybe the open source software use will be not so successful. So that uh, maybe you will tell something about uh, uh, increase of the, uh, the advantage of the open source software, increase of the quality, avoid reinvention of the wheel, stay at the cutting edge of the software innovation or whatever. But what I'd like to say, one thing, is that never talk about uh, OSS is free of charge software and it will reduce cost. It is really unattractive for many of the management. Reduce the cost, well, it's okay. But we mustn't forget about it. One thing, quite important thing, that is the use of open source software the responsibility is up to every user. The cost to use the open source software will be up to every user. So that it is not true that uh, open source software, use of open source software is cost free. Use of open source software is never you know, cost free issue, but we have to bear some sort of cost to take responsibility of use of, of, use of open source software. Oops. Hmm. 
here's another quite dangerous button that's here. If we, I, I, put, I press this button, uh, screen should be uh, black out. Anyway, another thing is that we can recommend uh, those kind of people to join uh, some of the open community, like here. And maybe they will find they are not you know, lonely guy. And they can find out any of the partner out of the companies, out of the, out of the you know, uh, project. And they will be able to find out some of the good you know, experience there, and we can exchange such kind of things. For example, ELC is one of the quite good places. And within uh, Tokyo or within Japan, we are holding uh, some of the uh, in, uh, three month interval uh, open source community embedded system guy event, which is named uh, op, uh, Japan Techno Technical Jamboree. And another option will be that to initiate some sort of the, you know, uh, quite light, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face meeting or whatever to have some of the network of those kind of, you know, lonely guy. And third important thing is that never give up learning the essence of the open source software and software license. Of course, if you can, uh, those kind of guys have some of the, uh, you know, good relationship with the legal guy or some of the attorneys, it must be a quite, you know, good help for them. But uh, even if uh, those kind of people do not have any good assistance from the, op uh, from the legal expert, they should be, uh, they shouldn't give up reading the open source software license. But uh, talking with the legal guy, uh, some of the, uh, you may feel that legal, talking with legal guy will uh, cause some sort of trouble like this one. Risk, 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 risk. There's a bunch of risk. Do not use open source software. And it's something tricky is here that you, guess what? Fear. Risk, 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 and fear. So that uh, you shouldn't use the open source software. That's some of the typical term of the uh, uh, legal guy always saying, starts saying. I'd like to give uh, some of the advoca advoca advocation for those kind of uh, legal per persons. Uh, before talking such kind of thing, I'm not the legal expert, so that please do not make any, any misunderstanding. So that I'm not the person to make an official advocation, but anyway, for many cases of the software license, license itself will prepare the license. So that uh, in order to get to know the intent of the licensor, it's quite easy. Just read the license. Just re reading the license will suffice to understand what the licensor's intent is, well, what license intents are. But I think about open source software. For example, the Linux. Linux kernel is uh, licensed under GPL. And GPL is prepared by Free Software Foundation, as you know. But Linux community people are no, you know, Free Software Foundation guy. Any cases, the legal department people start just reading the GPL license. And that is their, you know, majority to read such kind of, you know, a bunch of uh, wordy text. But think about it. It will not satisfy uh, to, you know, get to know the intent of the uh, licensor because licensor and the person who prepared the license is different. So that I wonder, just simply reading the license term do not always suffice to know the intent of the licensor, I mean that open source software community. So this, this is something of the pit, a pit hole of the uh, legal or some of the, those kind of guy. So my suggestion is that make uh, some of the internal co collaboration in between the person of the legal person again, and also the software guy who knows about uh, technology and maybe community. And then uh, remove the risk, 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 some fear, and get some of the position to use the open source software. And 
the most important thing is to make up the internal uh, good collaboration in between the legal expert and software community expert. But in order to reach this kind of situation, maybe those kind of lonely guys will have some of the many, many, you know, difficult way so that we'd like to help them as much as, as we can. For example, uh, I would like to uh, make some of the suggestions to many of the people who are making the, you know, publication of the open source software uh, by yourself. Add some of the hint to understand the open source software license, like, uh, for example, many people say, say, many people say that uh, what is the GPL contamination? And second, why we are not required to publish the uh, you know, application software which is linked to the LGPL license? It's something quite typical question many people raise. But if it were the person who faced this kind of uh, problem from the legal viewpoint, it must be a bit difficult to solve. Think about a, take a case of the GPL contamination. I don't like the word of contamination. Contamination just you know, imply me that the uh, uh, GPL license software is something quite dirty or something malicious, but it is not. So that I hate to use uh, GPL contamination, but many people are accustomed to say that GPL contamination, so that I would like to uh, follow that kind of manner, but this is not my true heart. Anyway, thinking about uh, GPL license, uh, GPL contamination, you, we have to read the uh, section two. For example, this is the case of GPL version two. Read it. For most of the, you know, uh, legal department person, uh, it's quite easy. They are quite accustomed to the wordy document, document. The one problem is there. However, they hardly understand the technical issue. But for the software engineers, well, no way. <laughs> it's something like a, or some of them are puzzled into this kind of situation. So that uh, maybe we will be able to fi highlight some of the important keywords. But uh, uh, this kind of hi highlighting is not always uh, help to, uh, so much to the software engineers still not. And another highlighting is here, but uh, it is also something quite insufficient to help software engineers. So that we'd like to come back to the you know, FAQ, come to the FAQ of the Free, Free Software Foundation, which is saying, well, Linux, uh, you know, a program with two parts with, and one program with two parts, this is a legal question which alternately judges will be decide. So that uh, it's something like a quite, you know, uh, disappointing word is here. But look quite closely into this kind of document. If modules are designed to run linked together in a shared address space, that almost surely means combining them into one program. And by contrast, pipes, socket, and command line arguments and com com uh, communica uh, communication mechanism normally used uh, between two separate programs. If it were the person who read this kind of text, uh, from the legal stuff, maybe no way. They cannot understand what it is saying. But uh, if it was read by the you know, uh, software expert, it's quite easy to understand. Maybe everybody will be able to understand pipe, socket, command line argument, oh, that's it. So that uh, if we can tell the legal department person, if it is subject to this kind of you know, mechanism, we can, we can feel so, so you know, easy uh, to avoid the uh, you know, uh, GPL license contamination or whatever. That kind of you know, internal conversation within, uh, in between the legal expert and software expert will likely to be happen to make uh, appropriate use of the open source software from, in terms of the open source software license agreement issue. And second one is the uh, uh, LGPL issue. Everybody is saying that uh, 
dynamic link and static link, and dynamic link is okay and static link is not okay, but in some cases, blah, 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 something like that. Especially the legal guy will tend to say such kind of thing. But if uh, the person of the software engineer read the section six of LGPL version 2.1, especially A and B, then everybody, maybe every software engineer will be able to draw up this kind of picture quite instantly. Like uh, if we follow up, follow to the section 6A of the LGPL version 2.1, any linking method can be applied to link some of the software library to your program. And your program will be uh, allowed to license up to your choice. But to this case, uh, you have to make uh, some of the publication of the, your program as well. But it is allowed to license uh, your program at your choice. And second one is quite, you know, familiar one for many of the embedded software guy. That is that uh, section 6B. If your program here is linked to the shared library, with some of the appropriate way to use the shared library. And there must be no argument about, uh, no argue about the dynamic linking mechanism of the Linux will surely uh, used for the uh, shared library to be linked. So that we have no, you know, uh, no question about this kind of thing. So to this case, this case your program is allowed to license at your choice. And of course, in this case, we are free from the uh, source code publication to your program as well. But we mustn't forget about the uh, one of the big you know, assumptions is here. Uh, that is, uh, we mustn't you know, uh, forbid the you know, uh, reverse engineering to your program. That kind of thing is described in the section six of LGPL version 2.1. It must be rather easy. Whenever we can draw up this kind of picture, maybe everybody will uh, be easy to understand this kind of you know, this mechanism. So I'd like to make a suggestion to many of the open source software publisher or open source software uh, you know, community people to write something about the uh, guidance of the making the open source software license compliance from the viewpoint of the licensor of the uh, open source software, which may be quite uh, helpful, may become quite helpful for whom to use that kind of your program. And maybe uh, they will uh, going to uh, seek for the next phase. And next phase will be a uh, challenge to become, a uh, uh, challenge to formate, form the in-house open source software community that is uh, getting into the bazaar style. In order to get into that kind of style, maybe it must be uh, quite important to set up the uh, collaboration and trust relationship in between the legal and IP experts and uh, software engineers or some of the community uh, relationship experts. That is a trust and collaboration is a quite important and uh, important and crucial issue. But whenever we can establish this kind of internal trust and collaborative you know, relationship together with those kind of you know, experts, maybe it is a great step ahead to formulate the internal open source software uh, use, user community or some of the user, usage, you know, mutual helping uh, style. So think about the uh, in-house bazaar style. This is the chapter two of my presentation. That is the, uh, in order to establish in-house in community, maybe we need some sort of the uh, variety of the, you know, talents. One is a software engineer who wish to use open source software. That's of course. And second one is open community relationship if expert if exist. Uh, for many of the software engineers, some of the barrier they, they are feeling to get into the open source community 
But uh, if there is some person who have, uh, who have already encouraged to join the open source community, he or she will become quite, you know, a uh, powerful partner within your company. And third one is, uh, of course, legal and IP expert. And of course, in-house community leaders should be ex ex exist and support from the management. I never say the support from the senior management or support from the executives, but at least some of the management should understand this kind of situation. And a uh, communication tool will likely to have and all participants should have at least minimum level of the understanding about open source software and the license. So this is a case of Sony. Uh, Sony have already uh, set up in-house OSS committee. And I'm taking a leadership of this, uh, this you know, in-house OSS committee. And about 100 members of in-house OSS users are joining this community coming from every business unit within, uh, within uh, Sony's umbrella. And uh, here's another group is here that is making an oversight of this kind of situation that is uh, named OSS Strategy Board that is also uh, led by me and some of the person like uh, Tim Bird or Frank Rowan or those kind of people. And that kind of you know, group is uh, supported by Corporate Software Strategy Committee and also the professional advisory is there from legal, IP department, and uh, public relationship, and quality control department. This is Sony's internal mechanism to deal with open source software, and every uh, business unit have uh, some of the person who are making a volunteer to co collaborate within each other uh, through this kind of uh, internal open source software community. And some of the uh, person have an external OSS community relationship, and some of those kind of people have already started to originate Sony original you know, open source community, like a deep learning uh, core engine or whatever. And maybe you will be able to see that kind of you know, sprout at the, uh, in the, at the uh, Sony's GitHub site, which I have already mentioned. I am keeping it in my mind. Never build any style of the open source software. And I have to, we have to be kind enough to the person who are coming, newly coming and uh, joining the open source software user community within Sony. And that is not only the user, but also some of them are not just a user, as I will uh, mention later. And of course, we have prepared the guideline. The guideline, maybe you can guess, the every company will have an internal rule. An internal rule is saying that you must not do, you must not do, you must not set up the internet server without the, uh, uh, some of the official you know, approval or whatever. You must not, must not, must not. But uh, my recommendation is that We'd like to start from, you may use open source software. You can use the open source software. You can participate in the open source software community and minimize the max must not. And of course, it is quite important to be reminded the open source software license compliance is quite important. I think this is only one must not, which you, we can see uh, within uh, Sony's internal guideline. That is, uh, in order to deal with the open source software community, uh, in order to use open source software, never stray from the right path or do something devious. That is only one must not. And another thing is you may use open source software, but of course, uh, adding some of the small words, so long as you follow the open source software license, so long as whatever. But uh, I think the uh, Sony's internal guideline is quite permissive. And of, co of course, in order to set up that kind of you know, phenomenon, uh, that kind of environment, we need to level up each you know, employee's understanding of the open source software, software to be raised so that we have already uh, prepared some sort of the uh, open source software training course. 
One is e-learning, which, which can be accessed even from the Sony Music Entertainment or Sony Pictures Entertainment as well. Sony Music Entertainment, Sony Pictures Entertainment, why open source software? It is because mobile application software. Maybe you know that uh, for the Android application software, iOS application software, in order to build up such kind of application software, the use of the open source software can be, uh, will become quite you know, casual. So that uh, even though those kind of people should have a minimum you know, understanding about the open source software. And of course, uh, software engineers or some of the person who uh, you know, intensively uh, relate with software should learn something quite intensive of the open source software issue. So that we have prepared uh, one uh, training course that is uh, 370 slides and it takes nine hours to go through. And it's quite happy, but uh, more than 500 Sony software engineers already went through. And they are giving me a big, you know, good reputation about it. And uh, of course, I'm making some of the uh, tutor of uh, leadership of this kind of training case. And Somebody gave me a good nickname. This is where does open source software boot camp? Well, it must be a quite you know, interesting nickname. I like it. And of course, pull up 20 times if you make a mistake here. But that kind of you know, joke I will never say. And also, uh, one another recommendation is to use the open chain. Open chain already have uh, one curriculum. Maybe. Uh, you can use this as an, some of the baseline of uh, setting up your internal training course, and you can add several stuff which is missing from your perspectives. So thinking about the style of the bazaar of the user, uh, user, uh, user community within each company, I think it have uh, something quite you know, good in advantages but that some of them uh, will be quite forgettable because those kind of people are something quite volunteer, not, not the expert or uh, dedicated to deal with open source software. So that they sometimes forget about the importance uh, to deal with the open source software community. So that uh, I will never forget about the stress one thing that is uh, never forget about the open source software community and deal uh, have a relate with those kind of community people. And of course, another thing is that uh, I dare say, do not stay just a user of open source software. If you, set, if you find some bug, you have make a bug report to the community. You fixed it, why not making a, you know, uh, upstreaming to the community? That was something that duty I always say, because when we forget about those kind of upstreaming of, the, of those kind of bugs, we sometimes face some of the tragic tragedy. Like, uh, uh, it's actually uh, experienced within my company that there's one serious bug we have found out in certain open source software, but they forget to make uh, some, some of the upstreaming. And later on, another big bug uh, happened to find out in the community side, so that we have obliged to update that kind of software to that latest version. And then we found out, our found out another bug still there, and the condition become, became worse. So that we should, we are obliged to make another task to fix up such kind of things. That's something of the tragedy. So that we mustn't forget about up upstreaming if it is just belonging to the bug fix or some of the minor, minor you know, feature app. And also the advantage of the open source uh, from viewpoint of technological strategy, that is we can make uh, some of the, uh, uh, become uh, some of the cutting edge position of software engineering or software technological stuff. <laughs> So anyway, I think the uh, Bazaar style, we have a bunch of you know, advantages uh, because everybody will have a good you know, knowledge about open source software so that the diversity we can keep so that 
Uh, if somebody start thinking about uh, new businesses or some of the new challenges of the software engineering, uh, software technological issue, we can uh, make uh, adapt to that kind of you know change. But uh, on the other hand, we have several you know uh, minority like. Uh, less possibilities to join the open source community, as I mentioned, an effort to maintain the participants' knowledge and experience of open source software. I'm getting to be something quite you know, uh, you know, uh, optimistic about it because the uh, training is making some sort of the success within my company. And also, another one is a serious one, less budget. So my final question right now is that our future is uh, going toward the cathedral or not. At this moment, I do not think the uh, way to the cathedral, uh, well, not uh, our way, but uh, we'd like to uh, make the Sony internal community as exciting as possible and to challenge a bunch of you know, challenges of ourselves to support by those kind of community. Okay, it's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and if you have some question or discussion or your experience, uh, please let us know. Thank you very much. Okay. I see. I cannot uh, remember some of the exact case at this moment, but uh, some of the uh, R&D team are now start challenging that kind of thing. And quite shortly, that will be subject of my problem. And maybe uh, we will be able to solve uh, uh, just uh, reading through the uh, LGPL license uh, precisely. Well, uh, to that case, maybe we will just you know, make a you know, publication of the LGPL library portion, that's it. Uh, I, am I making some misunderstanding to your question? Yes. Is on the embedded device and they're shipping the device with that software. Yeah. What would your application be? Yeah, we will make, uh, you know, LGPL library portion, a uh, source code publication. That will, will do. And also along with the uh, LGPL license term to be, uh, to be you know, uh, shown, uh, accompanied with that kind of products, as well as, the, you know, uh, well, written offer the uh, way to the, uh, uh, obtain those kind of source code what should be accompanied. That we are doing. Yeah, we have tons of cameras that fall in the category. I think you're describing the kind of mix of proprietary and RPL yeah. software. So we fundamentally understand that LGPL is one of the type of the GPL. So long as we you know, circulate or some uh, distribute the uh, binary code subject to the LGPL, we have to follow the way of the uh, GPL. But only one exception is linking. And linked to the linked software, we, have, we got another you know, uh, exception because of that kind of terms. So maybe we can uh, remember the nature of the LGPL, library GPL. And library GPL means that uh, Free Software Foundation make an exception uh, thinking about a uh, you know, case of the uh, LG, uh, library's special case. So that, uh, that will be quite easy to be understand. Okay, anybody else? Okay, here we go. Uh, somewhat related to the previous question. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. um, one of the requirements of the GPL is to make that source code available. Yes. Is it the company's responsibility to host an additional copy of that source code, even if it's unmodified, or is it sufficient to provide a link to the tarball that of is downloaded? Of course, I, I suggest you to talk to the uh, you know, legal expert in this case. <laughs> but uh, maybe any kind of you know, a way that, 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 he, that is a table or so, whatever, so long as that is an appropriate way to distribute the source, source code for the person of the expert of the software engineer, that will become an appropriate one, I believe. Sorry, but I cannot say some of the decisive, decisive thing. Yeah, I know. Industry practice is to host it. I think version three clarified that too. Didn't sure, 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 sure. Mm. Yeah, mm. And I'm not a legal expert either, but I did some some work with a large computer manufacturer, mm. and what they did was they offered a DVD ROM with all the source code on it for a nominal ten dollars. Yeah. Right. And you have to keep that kind of you know, service at least three years. That is written in the GPL. Go ahead. Of course, we know that that kind is of quite controversial, <laughs> and somebody will say something. But if it were the GPL, I am believing every method of the linking will cause some of the GPL contamination. So that, to that case, if that kind of software library is licensed on GPL, not LGPL, to that case, every software should be obliged to follow the you know, uh, obligation of the uh, GPL like uh, you know, source code publication or whatever. So that's what I am thinking. Well, that discussion actually goes exactly to my question, which is this question, which is, do you know of any good resources that cover the collisions of different licenses, like LGPL, GPL, V2, GPL, V3, MIT, ESD, like the interactions of them, and like which ones supersede others? Are you asking me about uh, Sony internal guideline or some other? Uh, well, you know? Yeah, we have, we have such kinds of things. And I personally have a, one of the uh, you know, challenge uh, to make those kind of you know, things in a sub, some of the public space. And I am now communicating with, with a book publisher. Uh, if it is possible to make that kind of thing avail, avail, uh, in an you know, open place. But sorry, starting from, from the Japanese. <laughs> Hmm. Also, Debian will, uh, probably has some uh, stuff there. I can't point to a specific example, but yeah, definitely. the distribution that hmm. really cares about licensing, um, they run into this issue a lot. Hmm. That, that, And I think the Debian case is something of the best practice. And uh, many of the open source community people should follow. <laughs> like that kind of you know, guidance, the users should be quite, uh, feeling quite at ease and will expand the case of the user, the user base. Any, anybody else? OK, thank you very much for joining this boring uh, you know, uh, talk. And have a good day. <laughs>